Hi YouTubers and you're watching Madness 358's channel and today we're going to talk about the fish's mouth. A fish's mouth is a very highly specialised part of its body and many types of fish are defined by it. Um, identifying the mouth and its related structures you're actually probably halfway towards figuring out what type of food it eats and probably more. There are probably two things that you need to look at when you look, you're looking at their mouths and the first thing is actually the direction that it faces and the shape of it. Direction of the mouth is important as it determines whether the food you serve it should sink, float or drift mid water. In most cases fish like rainbow fish, discus, flower horns, uh, German rams tetraneons, uh, glow light tetras and so forth. Their fish's mouth is uh, facing forward and that is probably easy enough. The type of food will need to sink slowly and drift giving the fish plenty of time to eat. Um, foods to give them include uh, blood worms, brine shrimp and off the shelf um, granules that can actually sink slowly will be good for these types of fish as well. But the thing is also they're actually quite versatile to these types of fish. Being having uh, pointed uh, mouths, they can actually take uh, food from the surface and from the bottom, depending on how eager they are to eat. As opposed to the mid-dwelling fish that waits for food to sink um, halfway to the bottom, you've got um, a lot of uh, fish that lives at the top and when you look at their mouths they're actually pointing slightly towards the surface and that's for good reason because most of the food source is derived from there. Some examples of fish that uh, lives near the surface include arowanas, archerfish, garfish and Siamese fighting fish. Arowanas for instance chase prey at the surface or catch insects floating on top of it. Archers go one step further and not just take insects um, on the surface but spit water towards a tree branch or something like that uh, to bring the insect down. Types of food to give surface dwellers has to float. So for arowana for instance um, you can buy off the shelf food sticks, um, you can get uh, crickets and what I do with mine is I actually give them frozen and I give it frozen whole so that it's not defrosted because if it's defrosted it actually sinks quite quickly and the arowana won't eat it if it's right at the bottom of the tank. In contrast to the surface dwellers you've got fish that lives at the bottom and when you look at their mouths they're actually pointing down. Uh, in these cases they can be either herbivores or carnivores as in the case of uh, stingrays. Uh, here you can see uh, a couple of stingrays at the, at the bottom of the, uh, this monster tank um, being fed. Regardless of the preference then uh, the food that you have to provide them needs to sink to the bottom quickly because if they don't a lot of the mid dwellers and the surface dwellers might take them before it gets to the bottom. In the case of um, the the pleaks, um, feeding needs to be done probably in the evening or when the lights are off because um, a lot of the pleaks are probably nocturnal. So basically we talked about the direction of the mouse and whether they're pointing towards the surface ahead or facing the bottom and how that affects the, the way we feed the fish. Well the other thing you need to look at is actually their teeth. When we think about carnivores, we think about their teeth and how many they have. We see all those jaw movies and we think about those big sharp razor teeth on the sharks. But not all predators are like that in the fish world. Um, some just basically swallow the food. And a prime, prime example would be the barramundi. Here is a slow-mo of 
a barramundi swallowing frozen food. It's taken at one fifteenth of a second, and it's probably even that at rate. It's probably hard to capture its velocity, such that it is swallowing at a, such a fast rate. Barramundi don't actually have teeth at all, and if you look inside their mouths, they actually have rough, like sandpaper things on their lips. And what that this does is it gives them grip when they swallow, just in case the, their prey tries to get out. The other thing that people think when they think of uh, carnivores is that they have to be large. But the reality is um, that it's not necessarily so. And it's actually quite closer than you think. If you look at tetra neons and uh, glow lights and all the tetras, uh, fish of families, if you look closely at, at their uh, mouths, they're actually quite sharp. And size for size, they're actually um, uh, comparable to, say, a shark or so forth. Some fish use a different implement rather than their teeth to, to chew their food. And it's a tongue-like structure um, used in cyprinids like goldfish and koi and danios, even flying fox. Also arowana's habit and even more are eels. In the case of koi, they have pharyngeal teeth and they are used to grind the food against the roof of the mouth to effectively aid in their digestion. With arowana's, their teeth or, or tongue-like structure uh, reasonably sharp and they use it to shred their pr uh, prey down before digesting that as well. And when we talk about tongue-like teeth, let's talk about the mora eel. It's, it's something almost like out of science, science fiction. When it uh, grabs its prey and opens its mouth, its uh, pharyngeal teeth actually comes out as well. and it's something out of like the aliens movie where where it comes out grabs grabs the prey and sucks it in it's, it's actually quite crazy when you think about it so by figuring out what type of mouth it has whether it's uh, pointing straight ahead or up or down you, you get to know what what to feed it and then you actually can figure out what type of fish that is um, but Mouths are actually used for other things as well, in, and in this case, my Red Devil Cross. He's dug a uh, little uh, ditch for himself, and he does that by using his mouth. In the case of a Plico, it's a different story because of its flat-like uh, structure. He uses that to, to grasp on to um, surfaces, especially in fast-flowing currents. And and that gives him an anchor point so he doesn't move because they're really bad swimmers anyway. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. And um, please subscribe if you want more videos. See ya.